Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Unity Church. We would like to uh, welcome you and thank you for coming today on this beautiful Sunday morning because it's so gorgeous today. And Ingrid is back from her trip. Hey, Ingrid. She brought some friends with her who speak no English, but they're from Okinawa. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> welcome. And so you can try talking to them. That'd be great. And Larry's here, so we're, we're ready to go. So I'd like you all to stand and we'll say our affirmation for this month of August. And it should be behind me. Yes. And so let's affirm this together. Today is a blessing. Right there? I choose. All right. I choose, I choose to, to give and receive blessings each day. I am grateful. The word no. for Sunday, August 13th, 2017 is awareness. I'm aware of God's presence in everything I do and everyone I meet. A first step in realizing our spiritual purpose is to become aware of the one presence and one power, God, the omnipotent that defines the essence of everything. We see divine presence in great spiritual teachers, beautiful sunsets, or in the eyes of children. Before we were awakened to spirit, there were experiences that spoke to us of a power far greater than the limits of this mortal realm. Our spiritual path is always moving us forward. Awake and aware, we find our lives filled with opportunities to accomplish our spiritual purpose. Choice by choice, we bring into awareness a dimension of consciousness that Jesus describes as the kingdom of heaven. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to clothe yourselves with the new self, created according to the likeness of God, Ephesians 4, 23 to 24. So our uh, word of the day today is awareness. And if we could do the affirmation together, please. I am aware of God's presence in everything I do and everyone I meet. Thank you. And now I invite you to visualize our sanctuary as a beautiful heart. And let's see this heart moving in and around and through each one of us. Back into Sunday school, Kayla and her children. And let us see this heart growing and blossoming within each one of us. Filled with love, caring, and compassion that we have for ourselves and each other. Breathe into this heart. Allow it to be full. And if you know of anyone in need of prayer, see them in our heart. And if you know of any circumstance in your world, in our world, See them in our heart as we say the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of it folds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So. Last week she wasn't here, so we couldn't acknowledge her for being our volunteer for the month. Didn't somebody tell you? Good secret, guys. <laughs> See, whenever I ask her something, she says yes. She wore the perfect dress for it. So we're just so blessed because Jamie and Jim, of course, they do so much. And they're always saying yes to us. So we're very grateful and wanted to acknowledge you. Thank you. And now Eric's going to do the meditation because he's our guest speaker today. So this morning, we'll experience the blessing of meditation. I invite you to close your eyes as we connect with the divine. Breathe in and out. 
may these words guide you as you center in the one presence and one power. God. God is my source of supply. God is my source of supply. I breathe in and calm myself. I breathe out and relax. In this moment, I relax into the divine energy of this space. And I breathe into the idea that God is my source. The source is continuous. The source is abundant. As I breathe, I let go. The source flows through me in the quiet. The source and I are one. The source and I are one. I gain confidence in the source. I am one with the source. The divine directs and guides me. I breathe in and I savor this idea. I am one with God in the silence. My life flows with abundant blessings. My life flows with abundant blessings. Abundant blessings are mine. I breathe into this idea. I breathe in gratitude. And I breathe out compassion and generosity. For my life flows with abundant blessings. And for this connection with spirit, I feel so grateful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. My German friend, Benny, um, floored the gas in his sports car and we were launched down this narrow street. Keith and I actually had the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity to go to Europe a couple years ago. Um, Keith won two free airline tickets through the travel company where he works. So we flew to Amsterdam and went on a Rhine River cruise. It was wonderful. As we explored the city that first day, they moved the ship from the port through the locks to the Rhine and 130 strangers boarded the ship. On the trip, we toured castles, cathedrals, ancient towns, and on board, 
we ate more extravagantly than we usually do. And we got to see my German friend, Benny. Benny Bach had actually stayed with my family as an exchange student over 30 years ago. And while Benny has visited the US many times, I had never been to Europe. And so we met him at a river town, squeezed into his little sports car and took off in a flash. We spent the day with Benny, his wife, Christiana, and their daughter, Rahel, um, catching up on stories, remembering, laughing, um, and then they drove us back to the ship. The trip turned out to be um, just a wonderful opportunity to get to know people from around the world and also from places we know. We did meet a wonderful couple um, who became our hiking partners on several tours. We met a man from Kansas City, where we lived, um, who invited us to dinner with his wife and their friends. And we met a group of people from Hawaii. They wanted to know all about Keith and his family and where he was from. For me, the Rhine River became a river of blessings, a river of ongoing stories, renewed relationships, and new friendships. So this morning we ask ourselves, how can I live in the divine stream of blessings? How can I live in the divine stream of blessings? So this morning, we're going to explore why rivers symbolize the divine flow, the divine flow of substance. We're going to look, look at how to let go of the myths we have about blessings, to realize God as our source, and how the practices of gratitude, giving, and goal setting align with the divine flow. So will you affirm with me this morning, God is my source of supply. The source and I are one. My life flows with abundant blessings. I'll say it again. God is my source of supply. Together, God is my source of supply. The source and I are one. Together, and I are one. My life flows with abundant blessings. My life flows with abundant blessings. So what do you do when you, need to get, when you need to get to the other side of a river? Missouri is known for its winding rivers, especially in the deep valleys of the Ozark Mountains. So there was this young man named Junior who was on his way out of the town of Pittsville. There really is a town called Pittsville. On his way to Cousin Irene's. His pickup begins to choke, to sputter, and stops. Well, he knows how to get to Cousin Irene's, but not as the crow flies. And so he sets off through the woods. He gets to the woods, and he gets to Crooked Creek. And he can see through the trees that there's this farmer in a field on the other side. And he yells, hey, mister, can you show me how to get to the other side? And the farmer turns around and looks and says, son, you is on the other side. <laughs> But like a good Missourian, he does show him how to cross at the Ford. They work on the tractor and then make their way back to the pickup. Yeah, some of you can relate to these stories. So yes, machines break down. Life doesn't go as we always want. Conflicts still flare. You may not like the work you do, 
We experience illness and our physical lives remain finite. You may feel, as I do at times, that you've experienced your fill of drama, drudgery, and death. The relative realm certainly gives us many opportunities to grow spiritually. There are also spiritual lessons illustrated by rivers. They may begin with just a trickle in a mountain. In their movement forward, they may be fed by other streams. The power of the flow may shape rocks, riffles, and waterfalls. Rivers also create fertile deltas that spur growth. And rivers continue to serve as examples of abundant blessings. The Rhine bless Europeans with a commercial route. The Missouri and its tributaries provided abundant resources to 10 Native American tribes who live nearby, and it still serves as a profitable waterway. The Jordan River symbolizes freedom, abundance, and the completion of a spiritual journey. But as people do, we've made barriers of rivers. Many country and state lines are made along rivers. So think about it this morning. Do you want to live in a world that divides or unites? Do you want to live in a world of barriers or a world of blessings? Sometimes it seems that we focus more on barriers than blessings. and Those are barriers to our good. There are myths about the divine. There are myths about thanksgiving and tithing and even our divine purpose. And some of these ideas we've struggled with, they're really falsehoods. The idea that God is out there and vengeful and cruel and reacts to our mistakes. The idea that God doesn't care. So it's hard to feel grateful when we have so little. There's that notion that there's only so much good. If we give it away, we have less. We don't need to have a purpose. Besides, we got to deal with whatever happens to us. And you can see where that can go on and on. So is your outlook stuck in barriers or blessings? Now we can face the barriers of our personal myths Realizing those is the first step to moving past the fear. The river of life is unpredictable, but the river of life is also sourced by the divine. In his book, The Flow of Life, Unity Minister Eric Butterworth explains, the stream of life, our own consciousness, is the only reality. We might say perception is our only reality. In Joshua 3, we read about the Israelites standing at the edge of the roaring River Jordan. Early in the morning, Joshua woke up and led the Israelites to the banks. They camped there for three days. Then the officers went through the camp and instructed the people when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the priest, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it. Then Joshua said to the people, Purify, bless yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And to the priest, Joshua said, Take up the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, and pass in front of the people. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front. Now, the Jordan overflows its banks throughout the time of harvest. But when the priest's feet touch the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still. Then the people walked into the stream bed and while all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood. 
on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing into the promised land. How many of you remember that story? A few? So this one doesn't get told maybe as often as the story of the exodus from Egypt. Today, most uh, academic scholars and uh, Bible scholars, archaeologists, suggest that exodus and this dramatic story of the entry into the promised land are a little bit like ancient tall tales. The stories, though, echo a very real enslavement in Babylon. And the Jewish people were related to the people of the area, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and other groups. Instead of a great migration, the Hebrew people distinguished themselves by rituals and customs. And their stories, their culture and scripture survive. We may look at the stories of the Hebrew Bible as symbolic, symbolic of our own personal spirituality and the mechanics of mind. The encounter with the Jordan provides some important clues about living in the flow, about living life abundantly. So Joshua may represent that part of us that takes initiative to lead. And actually the names Jesus and Joshua come from the same Hebrew name for deliverer. There are points when we're saved from the errors of mind and we begin to live in a new consciousness. That's probably why you're here. Joshua did what he said he would do, and the people trusted him. When we're prompt and we're courageous, we gain confidence and power. And we're, when we're truly in touch with our spiritual nature, we follow our faith through a challenge, just as the Israelites follow the priests. We come to consciously realize our spiritual nature is our real self. The Ark of the Covenant is the place of God within. In this story, the stream of the Jordan may represent that stream of thought that we must face. And for a moment, the thought stream can stop and we can re-examine our thinking. Our new spiritual consciousness is like living in a promised land, right? Just like the story in Imagine, the song. So today, we re-examine our view of God. We re-examine the idea of living in the flow. This morning, I want to look at three things. So we've talked about God. We'll talk um, some more about God, but also gratitude, giving, and goals. So what do we know about God? In unity, we say there is one presence and one power in the universe. This energy is the source of all there is. This vitality is sometimes re also referred to as divine substance an invisible force that underlies all of the physical realm. This podium, this building, you and I. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, explained that God is the source of a mighty stream of substance, and you are a tributary to that stream, a channel of expression. When we connect with the continuous flow of God energy, we express our great potential. We are in movement when we practice gratitude, giving, and goal setting. We're in the flow. So how do we feel more grateful? Well, you've been talking about blessing, about blessing other people. So we do all of these things by practicing. When we exercise a technique, it becomes more natural. Eric Butterworth suggests, giving thanks is an important state of consciousness, which keeps you in, a, in an awareness of oneness with the divine flow. 
Gratitude can also come naturally when we're already in that attitude of blessing. We bless those who are sharing our lives. We bless the things in our lives, for they too are expressions of the divine. So giving sometimes scares us. Why does giving scare us? We can actually release that idea that money equals success. Yes, money can be a part of success, but we can let go of the idea that success is limited. Unity minister Edwin Gaines confidently asserts that giving is essential to real prosperity in all its forms, in our relationships, our health, and our finances. She and other Unity teachers often recommend tithing 10% of your income to the place that feeds you spiritually. Giving may seem counterintuitive, but she explains, there is a law of compensation. The more you give, the more you receive. God will provide it. So why should we set goals? How many of you have actually met or seen Edwin Gaines in person? So maybe she could come here sometime. Yeah. Always working on it. Yeah. <laughs> so Edwin Gaines has chosen her life purpose a long time ago to teach the world prosperity principles. She does this all the time. And she encourages imagining. Wonderful, magical things can happen. If you're willing to commit to putting yourself out there, stepping outside your comfort zones, playing at the game of risk, it feels like risk. It feels like playing without a net. But when you make a commitment, you're never playing without a net because God is your net. Taking risks and acting on your commitment reduces you to simply trusting God. Trusting God. While also setting goals. And we set bold goals to catch the good that is flowing to us. So this morning we commit to living in the flow. We immerse ourselves in God and express through gratitude, giving, and goal setting. So just a few more questions to contemplate. How do you connect to the divine within you? Well, we can meditate, we can practice affirmations on the idea that we are in the flow directly from the one power in the universe. How do you count your blessings? You can give thanks for this spiritual community and bless each other. We can give thanks throughout our day. You can even make a list, an ongoing list. How do you bless the world? Well, we each make a world of blessing by making those positive interactions and sharing. What gives your life meaning? Where do you put your energy? Many of the Unity authors talk about that the universe is ready to supply more. Where do we put our energy? Explore what your life purpose is. So let's affirm together again. God is my source of supply. Together, God is my source of supply. The source and I are one. The source and I are one. My life flows with abundant blessings. My life flows with abundant blessings. So express the river of God life rushing through you. Blessings on your journey. All right, even. So we just give thanks for the gloriousness of this day, for your presence here with us, for all the blessings health, prosperity, all the good things in life are here for 
for us right now. So in these moments, dear God, we ask that you dedicate and consecrate these gifts to do your will and your work in and through each one of us and this ministry. And so it is. Amen.